My fellow Call of Duty mobile gamers, I regret to inform you that today we all lose a piece of ourselves. We just got the brand new update for Call of Duty Mobile, bringing in a brand new set of seasonal challenges to unlock the new marksman rifle, the SPR-208. But the reason we're going to be losing a little bit of our soul is because of the fact that we have not only one, but three different challenges that require us to use the NA-45. Kill 10 enemies with any NA-45, kill 20 enemies with any NA-45 with an optic, and then finally get 10 headshots with the NA-45. So it's been a little painful process getting up to this point, but we are on our last category challenge for the SBR 208 unlock. So what I'm gonna be doing is hopping into a free-for-all, hopefully knocking out these 10 headshots in one match, because if I use the NA-45 for another game, I might be sick. So with all that being said, we're gonna go ahead and hop straight into it. I'll see you guys in game. We found ourselves a game of Meltdown. Now, since free-for-all is only 20 kills, half of them, for us are gonna have to be headshots if we want to get this challenge done in just one matchup and let me tell you i want to because there's nothing more i would love to do than stop using this weapon right now please guys stop running around i don't want to have to spam shot you i'll do it though if i have to okay, we have another guy up here please just stand still and tank the headshot <gasps> okay well that sucks we only have one headshot so far three kills on the board though Nice, that one counts. Yes. Nice, I think that might be four or five. Ooh. There it is. And he just spawned up again over here. Oh, that should get us there. Oh, thank you, Shock RC. Yeah, I think that's that's enough. That's what we needed right there. Which means we can just finish off this game in traditional NA45 style. <laughs> Being a bot, missing both shots and still getting the kill. <laughs> Look at how stupid this is, bro. I missed so high and then I missed so low. Still killed him. All right, tell me we got 10. We did. I was afraid I miscounted there for a second. All right, so you guys saw right there, we did just unlock the new SBR 208 Marksman Rifle. Super excited for this thing, man. It's been a fun weapon to use in Modern Warfare 2019, so... I'd assume it's going to be pretty fun here in COD Mobile as well. So I was scrolling through the attachments here and I came across the magazines and we've got three different types, one being the basic extended mag and then the other two are pretty unique. So we got the 300 round reload, which is actually going to increase damage itself. And then you've got the 338, which is going to increase the body part damage multiplier. I'm not entirely too sure which one is going to be more useful. So we're actually going to go to the firing range and test it out. So to start the testing off here, I wanted to actually use the SBR with no attachments just so we could get like a base of the amount of damage this weapon actually does. It's going to be 144 to the head, 129 to the chest, 108 to the stomach. And then we're going to start working on the limbs. So arms are going to be 100, 100 on the hands, legs and thighs, both gonna be 72. So from at least five, six, seven meters-ish, it looks like it's gonna be a one shot to any part of the body with the exception of the legs. I'm assuming this weapon's probably gonna have a good bit of like damage drop off potentially. And that is where that like limb magazine is actually gonna come in handy. Still looks like at 10 meters, we have the same multipliers. We're gonna go all the way back here to 20, hit a hand shot again. It did 126 for some reason. That was a shoulder shot. Did 126 again. Interesting. I wonder... Belly does 105, so it only went down one. So it looks like at this range, only like the wrist to the hand is actually going to be a non-lethal. Anything else is going to be lethal. Uh, was that the belly or was that... That was considered the legs. Almost. That was like the groin area. It does 91, so it has its own hitbox itself. Kind of strange, but we'll say about 20 meters is where you actually can't one tap to all the different limbs. So this is how it performs with the 338 rounds. I wanted to test this out. So that was about like the forearm we did 129. And then once again, yeah, the hands are still gonna be a lethal 100, at least in multiplayer. We'll go all the way back to 40 meters now and try this out as well. Going for the chest though, it's still 120. Waist is still 100. And the legs are still 70. So it's 126 in the forearm. But then once you tap like the fingers and the hands, it's going to be 98. So it's going to be a non-lethal to the hands, non-lethal to the thighs and legs. I'm going to go back to just like the regular version of the weapon and test like the shoulders. 108. So still lethal. 
84 to the hand, 108 to the forearm, 108 to the chest. This is really interesting. So now we're going to try the 300, which was the one that just increased the base damage in general. So that's 108. That's 129. How are the legs? 70. The hand is 100, potentially. Let's see if we can get like a more definite hit on the hand. Yeah, 100. 100. So let's say just sort of based off my initial impressions here, as far as multiplayer goes, it's more useful to use the 300 round reload as opposed to the 338 that increases limb damage. Just because it seems like at any range that you're going to have in multiplayer is going to be a one tap, like from the belly button up, even if you're hitting the limbs with the regular base damage increase. And again, this is like the furthest out. We'll go to five meters once again here and just see how much the damage actually increased. I believe the base to the chest was 129 as opposed to it now doing 138 and hands are also still going to be a one tap. So I really don't see any real reason to use the 338 in multiplayer. I, I think its biggest appeal is probably to BR because of the fact that a headshot does 306 damage as opposed to the base headshot that only does 144 and then if you use the one that increases the damage itself it only does 154 so i would say that this is probably more of a br attachment just so you can one tap through pretty much any armor to the head that would make sense but again as far as the multiplayer goes there's no reason to use the 338 over the 300 as far as what i could find there in those initial like first little testings so we actually have another unique feature of this weapon and that's the fact that it has a bolt attachment slot and we've got two options we got the light bolt and the heavy bolts the heavy bolt increases damage at range while decreasing the fire interval and the light bolt will increase the fire interval while decreasing range. So I think we're going to go with that just because I would rather have a faster bolt speed as long as it doesn't kill my one shot ability at range. We're going to have to test this out again. This is a very interesting weapon. So we'll go back to the 40 meters and if I can't one tap to the hand then that means there's going to be another like damage drop off outside oh my god yeah dude this weapon's so complex so if you put on the damage increase magazine and you put on the damage at range decrease uh bolt then at that point within 40 meters you aren't going to be able to one tap to the hands and then 91 of the groin down so yeah very complex weapon definitely a lot of moving parts when it comes to finding the perfect build for you. Personally, I don't think I'm going to be taking too many 40 meter and further fights with the iron sight, and I would be playing a little bit more aggressive with this weapon. So I think we're going to go with the light bolt just because uh, having the ability to shoot more rounds faster is probably going to be better for my personal playing style. We'll go with the OWC tactical laser. At least that's a pretty standard attachment that we can use. And moving forward, let's see what we can do to increase that ADS. Oh, I actually love this. So under the barrel attachments, we have the RTC light monolithic suppressor barrel. So you get a silencer and you get a decrease on the ADS time. I think combining that with the YKM combat stock is going to be the move for me. The only like worrisome I have here on the downside for this particular attachment is the plus 25% aiming crosshair drift. I'm assuming that means there's going to be more weapon sway with the weapon once the weapon sway hits. But I don't think that I'm going to be staying ADS long enough for that weapon sway to actually take effect. So we'll just kind of risk it here on our first build for the weapon. This is how we're looking right now. This thing honestly looks more like a shotgun. We got the RTC light monolithic suppressor. So a couple of benefits for that for me. I like to stay off the radar. So having the built-in suppressor is pretty nice. And then we also are going to be increasing the scope and speed. YKM combat stock also used to increase the scope and speed. OWC tactical laser. We're going to be getting some ADS bullet spread accuracy on that as well as a subtraction of the ADS time. So again, high mobility, very helpful. And then we're moving on to the magazine. Now we went with the damage increasing 305 round reload. And then that is going to knock down the fire interval speed, but the light bolt is going to increase that above what it's getting knocked down by 5%. So overall, it's got a faster fire rate, higher damage, higher mobility, and higher range alongside a suppressor. So I think this is a pretty solid build, but honestly, it could go either way. It's a coin flip. So we're going to go ahead and hop on into a ranked game and actually see how this performs in game. Fun stuff. We got a four stack on the other team for our first match with this thing. Uh, we got ourselves some crash domination. domination. 
So, this should be a fun experience. Initially, this definitely does have a pretty quick ADS speed. I don't know how it compares to the Kilo, because that's what we'd really be comparing this weapon to. Nice. Oh, we're in their base right now. This definitely feels very consistent, and I think that has to do with the fact that when you hit the arms or shoulders, it's still a one-hit. So anything pretty much above its one-shot lethal zone, it's, it's going to one-tap no matter what. And I think that makes the weapon feel very, very fluent. I saw there's like three players over there, so I tried to dip out of that fight. Not sure if we got one coming up here. There he is. Yeah, dude, no, this thing's fun. At least that's how I feel initially here. Mood could change any second now. Oh, the headshots of that thing is satisfying. Here we got players all around us. So that the suppressor definitely just came in handy there. That guy had no idea I was near. Finally got that B flag. Just let the spawn trap keep rolling in. Oh my god. This thing feels very fluent. Flick shots definitely feel like they're super possible as well, just because, again, like I said, it doesn't matter if you hit the limbs, you're still going to one-tap. As long as it's within or above that one-shot lethal zone. Oh my god, I feel like that shouldn't have one-tapped, but I'm not going to argue. I saw that sniper dude looking at me. I wonder how this weapon performs through, like, wall penetration. Definitely super easy to use, though. Like, sometimes whenever you have an iron sight sniper, like I would say the Kilo, for example, it doesn't feel like it has super strong aim assist, but this weapon definitely feels like it's pretty consistent. What about the equalizers here? Okay, it wasn't planning on turning the corner into a whole team, but... Yikes. Keep doing our thing, though. Pop this UAV real fast. I mean, yeah, based off of my first impressions here, man, this weapon's very consistent, very fun to use. And I'm even having a whole lot of that, like, weapon sway. Or not weapon sway, my bad. Like, iPad sort of bugged out aim shake that I, I've been talking about a little bit here on the channel. It's pretty bad today, and we're still managing to pull off a pretty nice performance. It's a flat hit marker right there. All right, everyone, that is going to go ahead and do it here for today's video. As far as my initial impressions of the SBR-208, I definitely think this is a solid weapon that any aggressive, accurate sniper is going to have a blast with. I wouldn't recommend playing long ranges with this weapon, just obviously because the benefit of marksman rifles is the fact that you can play super aggressive, have high mobility builds, and you can use an iron sight. So definitely you want to play into that factor. And again, if you guys want sort of an initial build that's solid all around, this is the one I was using here in game. I never felt like I was getting a hit marker in a situation where I should. So definitely the 300 five round reload contributed to that. And of course, the ADS speed you guys saw was pretty dang quick. I would say the only thing that I felt was very lacking in this build or maybe this gun in general is my movement speed. And I'm not talking about ADS movement speed. That obviously was slow, but just movement speed in general on the weapon. I didn't feel like I was as quick as I wanted to be. But at the same time, I've also been using SMGs a lot lately, so it's probably just in comparison to a submachine gun. Of course, my marksman rifle gameplay felt a little bit slower. So yeah, overall, I would give this weapon a solid 8 out of 10. It's super fun to use. Again, super consistent and definitely not a bad weapon to pull out. I think aggressive, accurate snipers are going to go stupid nuts with this, and I can't wait to see clips on like Twitter of people using this. Um, but everyone, that is going to go ahead and do it here for myself and today's mobile channel upload. Thank you all so much for watching. If you all did enjoy, I'd really appreciate if you went ahead and gave the video a like rating. With all that being said, I'll catch you all in the next one.